One of the best things you can take from van life philosophy is the discovery process. Okay, so what I mean by the discovery process is when you look at your normal life, of course, you're sitting there and you've got structure all around you. Most of it is designed to keep you comfortable and you have structure involved with the way you work and live. And very little of it is really discovery, whether it be self-discovery or whether it be just out in the world and um, meeting and seeing other people. Now, the van life does this on steroids. It takes all that structure and says, no, <laughs> takes all that structure and throws it out and says, okay, I don't know what I'm going to do the next day. I, I don't even know I'm going to sleep maybe from day to day. So a lot of the van life is just about discovery. And one of the people I think that's good to look at uh, in terms of that discovery is van city life. And van city life is, you've probably seen it. It's uh, put on by Chrome and his little dog Cruz. He used to have disco, but disco passed away, which was sad. That's a really sad one to watch. But he's got crews now, and uh, they travel around. And one of the things I love about uh, Chrome is that basically he's got this um, childlike playfulness about him in all his discovery of the places he goes. It's not He doesn't rely a lot on technology, like having a drone and such. But what he does rely on is playfulness. And one of the scenes I think comes through the most is with his bridge scene. I Check this turned out. around, so what? <laughs> I want to do it again. Woo, are you ready? Oh, this is so cool. All right, one more time going this way. Oh, that's where the lights leak through. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> this is so fun. Again, again, again. Do it again. <laughs> I'm like a little kid right now. So much fun. What? Don't laugh at me. I'm having fun. Okay, this is the last time. <laughs> this thing is the coolest thing ever. So he loves to just be playful. And, and he says, you know, weirdos unite. He, he admits he's a little, little off, a little weird, right? So, but that's okay. But, but see, along with that playfulness is a bit of discovery. And that starts out from the very first part of his channel where he's jumping in his van and he doesn't just plan it out. Here he is. He talks about how his van build uh, starts. Getting into van life, my suggestion to you is just get into it. Don't think too much about building out your van. I literally built this thing out in like no time flat with very little planning. So that whole van build is, is uh, built upon the idea of, okay, let's just go ahead and jump in. Now, okay, so that idea is not for everybody, but the thing of it is that discovery process is still something to kind of weave into what you're doing i think in in part with uh being creative you even if you're an entrepreneur let's say and your life is a little more chaotic uh and less structured you still have thrown at you the idea of blueprints of the roadmap and follow this guru or that guru and this is the way to do it not that other way and what I love about the van lifers is that they don't do that. When you look at their van build, they're not saying this is the way to do it. This is here's what I did. You may. And here's what I'm doing with uh, what I do day to day. It may or may not work for you. And one of the things they discover and a lot of the parallels with what they discover is you may come up with the greatest van build on paper. You put your van build together and you discover in living in the van that you need to alter things because of the way you actually live. And even with RVs, uh, RVs are something you can buy and everything's set up for you. And that's your roadmap, so to speak. Let's say you're an entrepreneur. That's your roadmap. You've decided, I want the roadmap. I want everything set. But even those RVers will find that they'll change what uh, change to another RV altogether, whether it be up or down or different uh, layout based on actuality. And so the discovery process is something that the van lifers embrace, not only from the point of, OK, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but also saying I'm OK with the breakdowns and um, that come along the way and they prepare for that. And I think embracing that discovery process is key. And it's, it's saying, okay, uh, I'm okay without that roadmap. And in fact, it's going to be a lot more fun, that discovery process. So look at your own like creativity and how you have your habits. Those are your structure and your roadmap, so to speak, but you got to bust it up.
and say, uh, where's the discovery? How can you drive that discovery? And like such as with the Profit Engine Challenge, that's not just, um, that's not a blueprint. It's a discovery process. It's saying, okay, start, start the whole thing. You know, here's a road and you can go wild with it. So I just think that the discovery process is something to embrace. And when you embrace it, um, it's much like going across the country. You can, instead of the big interstate, you can take the blue highways, uh, such as William Least Heat Moon wrote about in his book, Blue Highways. And it's those smaller highways where you're going to eat different things and meet different people and make discoveries you wouldn't otherwise. It makes the trip a lot more interesting. It takes longer, but it's much more interesting. And it's because it embraces a discovery process rather than just saying, you know, zoom, I'm just going to go across country and that's it. Get to my destination. It's the destination versus the journey. And you, you don't have to, and obviously each one has its benefits, but I'm saying take a bit more discovery and kind of pepper it into what you're doing. And when you do, there's uh, much more spice and, to it all. And there's in that discovery process, just a way of saying, okay, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens and play a little bit. A lot of times when you search van life, what you see are um, van tours and things just having to do with the van itself. A lot of the van is highlighted. And as mentioned before, it's, it's much like when you start photography and what you focus on are the lenses and the camera. Well, that's all great and everything, but there's something else I think that bridges the gap a bit more. And that has to do with leveraging the van to do something in life. Here's how one van lifer describes it what the van looks like, what my van is, the things that I own, yeah, that means almost nothing to me. I am completely detached from objects that I own. I own very little and I really have no attachment to them. That's my point that I'm trying to get out, out to you here is that you can't have an attachment to things if you're gonna live like a minimalist. And the other thing is, if you spend your time worrying about what your van looks like and what your clothes look like and what people think of you, you're not going to be happy. Okay, so here's another way to look at it. I think that's interesting, and that has to do with uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Now, here he is on London Real, but other places where he talks about breaking the habit of being you. I think what the van life potentially can do is break you out of that habitual life that you've created so that you can build a new life altogether. Now, that's not the only way to do it. And Benson talks about using meditation, breaking away from layering your old life immediately when you awaken upon your regular life. And in that sense, you're able to build a new life uh, much more easily. Here he is talking about that. Um, and experience then is one of the things that enriches circuitry in the brain. It literally changes. I mean, learning is making connections, but experience is enriching those connections. And the side effect of a change in the circuitry in the brain when in the midst of an experience, that we begin to feel an emotion. And the, the emotion is the payoff from the experience. When you feel unlimited, when you feel gratitude, when you feel whole when you feel in love with life now part of that process i think uh here's i'm going to show you another quote from joe uh in another interview where he goes into the ability to contemplate when you break out of your normal habitual routines you then need that space to contemplate and i think uh, leaping into the van life for a certain period of time can allow you that room to basically contemplate and ask yourself what do i really want who am i and what's next regardless of where i've been um, you know, what do I want to intentionally do? And obviously the van life or tiny houses and things like that aren't the only way. And, you know, there's meditation and all that, but they are the more obvious way because they radically change your whole life completely so that you can experience it and appreciate it in a very different way. Uh, so here's Joe talking about contemplation. When you are no longer interested in a lot of the mundane things that we're seduced into thinking are so important, wealth or health, I mean, all of the things that, you know, money and possessions of people, you realize that none of those things make you happy, right? So you start asking bigger questions, right? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What happens when I die? Am I eternal? You know, what's the soul? 
I mean, these are important questions that, that cause us to start to no longer be so preoccupied with all of those things. And I think that the contemplation process of thinking about them is the building process neurologically. We're starting to install circuitry in our brain and as we start to contemplate, we kind of break the hardwired programs of thinking in the same way. And we I think it's interesting understanding the van life and how it can marry to your own life and actually result in something uh, new and liberate yourself from the conditioning that you or society or those around you may have imposed unknowingly. Now, van life isn't the only way, and obviously I'm not recommending that you jump into a van and just join uh, that movement. But it is interesting to look at the tools and the experiences and what the van life and actually um, is able to do for some people in terms of liberating their life to be more creative. And that's the part that I think is really important is when you look at life itself um, and your ability to be creative is often um, mired in the day to day. And so liberating yourself from that and really making your life uh, more intentional um, is often a balance between that security and that freedom. And so the van life, I think, embodies a lot of that really well. So I'm going to leave you with a cool quote from Edward Snowden. He did a recent interview with Joe Rogan, and it just talks about eliminating risk. And it's interesting because I think if you look at discovery, um, you know, itself within van life allows you uh, as a tool to discover life in a broader way than, you know, a sticks and bricks as the van lifers like to say um, house where you're kind of chained down. You you have a lot more security, but you lose some of that freedom. And I think so Edward Snowden's quote just highlights that in a, in a cool way. And uh, do subscribe if you want to hear more of these. These are just ideas noodling around a bit. So it's it's not saying here are the answers. It's saying, whoa, look at this. This is cool. And could you take some of this and kind of weave it into your own life and make it work for you? And I'm hoping that the, some of those videos do that. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks a lot for listening. See you next time. But at the end of the day, you have to recognize if you're trying to eliminate all risks from your life, what you're actually doing is eliminating all possibility from your life. You're trying to collapse the universe of outcomes uh, such that what you've lost is freedom. You've lost the ability to act because you're afraid. That's